How's it going, everybody? So, before I get this video rolling, I wanted to clear, or clear up some stuff. So, yesterday, this video was supposed to drop. Um, I, I did both recordings back-to-back, -back, uh, Rhonda and then Seamus, and I was set to drop this video last night, but I got caught up with Father's Day and hanging out with my two-year-old. And right before I realized that it hadn't dropped yet, I fell asleep. So, woke up this morning and went, crap, I need to bust out this video. The video itself was good and everything like that, but it had some messages in there for Father's Day and everything like that. And since that time has passed, we're just going to move on. We're going to do a new video and everything else like that. However, the one message I do want to take from my other video is this. I want to thank every single one of you for subscribing to my channel. In just a month's time, it has grown a little bit higher than what I thought it was going to. I have high hopes for it. And the amount of positivity that has come from my videos and everything else, my direct messages, my group chat, stuff like that, your guys' words humble me. And I truly, truly appreciate it. And I'm going to continue to try and put out more and more videos. If you guys are interested and me playing other games let me know and i will see if one if i have them two if they intrigue me and three if we can get something rolling with it all right so with all that being said one more final thank you everyone i truly truly appreciate your support now let's get into the video so we're going to be looking at seamus the brawling brutes my opinion the best showboat in the game nakamura is up there but the fact that Nakamura needs, at the beginning of the month, he needs two MP trainers to go off. Yes, he's fast and everything else, but that double MP really hurts, especially if you don't have affiliation belts. So that's what puts him in tier in the second spot for me. Seamus, first feud of the month, only needs one MP trainer. Second feud of the month, if you are lucky enough to have Santa Hogan, with um, at 17k or higher with that additional move point he's it's one mp trainer both views so my ideal build is this one right here to be frank this one is the end all be all of my gameplay i understand people don't have matt hardy a lot of people don't have uh memrock so I'm a, what I'm going to do is I want to show you the ideal setup first, and then we'll go into a couple of different trainers, a couple of different ways to roll this. And we're going to end it on what I consider to be his weakest build, which would be the Irish Curse, back, Irish, Irish Curse Backbreaker, the Cloverleaf Submission, and the Celtic Cross. I tried the Triple Green. I've seen others use it. And I believe the only reason why they used it was for Sheik Plate to enhance this front power slam. Since the Irish Curse and the front power slam are only 4 MP, really it doesn't take a whole lot to charge it. But the problem is, is there's no, there's no way outside of the finisher to get green gems. So I guess one way you could do it is you can run the Irish Curse, the front power slam, and then the Celtic Cross, see where you land but it's going to take more time just because you're waiting for the Irish curse backbreaker to go off. It's a chore in my opinion. If it sits your play style, it sits your play style. Me personally, it doesn't sit mine. So that's the only reason I'm really going, I'm just kind of skimming over it. I am going to do the submission build, but outside of that, this is the strongest build. Now going over to trainers, we have Matt, we have Memrock. The key cornerstone to this is tech Stacy. If you don't have Tech Stacy, you can switch her out for Typhoon, Hall of Fame Snoop. I want to say there's one other one that you can do with that. It's really, it's a, it's a give and take. You know, if the game has not given you Tech Stacy, take what you can, right? So moving on, we're going to go over to the title. Now, I was lucky enough to get a 60% gem damage increase on my belt. 20, 40, it doesn't matter. Gem damage increase is what he needs on a belt you can go with the z plate the z plate does help it's not critical but it does help 
So, all, of course, full Fury 2, if you can. Me, I have a mix match here of Fury 2 and regular Fury. That'll change because one of the things I failed to realize was I strapped the medals onto Seamus, liked where he sat. Didn't really intend on pumping that up a little bit more, but I should have. If you are maining a card, like for me, Seamus is one of my mains. He's my one of my go-to showboats for feuds. If you're doing that, make sure that the medals that are attached to them are the exact ones that you need. Make sure that they are leveled up as high as you can take them. I understand people don't have the strap up pass, so it takes a little bit longer. But I do have that grinding video with Godfather and the nodes where you should go to grind. It It's a process, but it's well worth the time invested. Today we're going to fight against uh, Wade Barrett here. Let's hope the Trickster Curse does not come into effect and he doesn't dodge all of my stuff. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to start off with the countdown. While the animation's going, I always look where I can put my uh, pin bar not moving gems, which is the second red move. I'm sorry, I failed to say the moves. Broke kick. You do 113,000 damage, choose six gems to make into one turn countdown. That'll deal 136,578 damage and make six random gems into multiply gem strengths of three. Matt Hardy and Memrock both work on this. Beats of the Bodrin. You do 128,000 damage, choose four gems to make into yellow gems. The pin bar will not move. One thing I have been asked is, would it be good to have Showboat Ziggler, excuse me, on here for more gems? Yes and no. Yes, if you do not have Matt Hardy. No, if you have Matt Hardy. To be honest, Matt is a very big piece of this puzzle too. And then you have White Noise. Make 35 multiply gems in, or multiply gems into red gems, doing 123 damage in the process. 123,000 damage in the process. This is the this is the button. This is the red button for me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this pin bar. You always want to make sure that when you do this, you are setting yourself up for a wild card. The wild card is critical. Now we have this countdown redone, so we're going to go. Countdowns again. It doesn't really matter where you place them, just as long as you don't break them. Swipe. Let all of that go off. You're going to fill the entire board and go with white noise. Now, I have tried, instead of Tech Stacy using Zombie Bianca, 10 million damage. Done. Over. There's. It's finished. My opinion, faster than Nakamura. The only reason why it went slower right there is because I was explaining the process. Okay, so we saw with this one that it was 10 million damage. That is beautiful, in my opinion. And necessarily, if you don't get the second countdown off, it doesn't matter. It's still going to blow up the board. You're still going to do anywhere between eight and 10,000 damage. A six-star bronze card, unless they're Vitality Banded, they're not kicking out of that. And if they do kick out of that, there is a problem and a glitch in the system. Okay, so we are going to switch out Tech Stacy, just in case people don't have it. We're going to go with gem damage here. And I want to go with Typhoon because everybody should have Typhoon. He was a free card and he's one of the easiest ones to pick up. We will. This is this is a tough one for me. Strictly because I don't like taking Memrock off. I become way too comfortable. So two things that you can do here is one you can go with powerhouse hogan if you have him at max trainer to generate one more color so you'll generate one more red gem let's see if i can find my hall of fame snoop right here we'll go hall of fame snoop right there and for here we'll go generate now this is how you're gonna this is gonna be a different way of playing this okay so it's gonna switch up just a little bit I like to consider the Matt Hardy Memrock combo with Tech Stacy as the one hit KO. This one is probably going to take an extra turn, but we shall see. Okay, so we have all of these right here, so we want to utilize that area. So we're just going to put the countdowns over on this side. I always stick to walls. Um, I played, I played with um, 
what's his name? Tech or er, DX Triple H. I played with him for so long that it has now become part ingrained in me to stick to the walls. Okay, so we do have this ready to go. So we're gonna go here. And tour is completely different than anything else. Just because of the perk system. So we're gonna swipe this red. It's gonna glow all the way across the board. We're gonna set these again. Just in case. And now we're going to essentially use all of those extra yellows to fill up a giant section. Okay, we do have our skip. One, two, three, four, five, six. Always count the notches. If I pin him, is because I was meant to pin him. Bam, there we go. Okay. So we're gonna try this one more time. Do not use the countdown, it is not ready. So at this point, just abuse a little bit more of your extras. Go there, there. So I'm gonna do line breaks here. I'm putting a yellow over here so that way it gets encompassed too. Take those out. Now since we can do it again, we probably should, but I'm not going to. I wanna utilize what space is here since they're all clumped. Explosion of flavor. All right, so we're looking at three million, but see, he's still down. There is no coming back from that. So it is completely possible to use other trainers in those regards to win outright against the six star bronze. We are lucky that the trickster didn't go and dodge our moves, so we could actually do a full, a full uh, fight like we wanted to, and really showcase that off. So I'll leave this here for just a second. If you want to screenshot it. But essentially, this is one of the easier ways to do it. Now, if you don't have Hall of Fame Snoop, a lot of people do, some don't. You can easily switch this out for uh, Santa Hogan. Santa Hogan's a great option here. Um, if you want to, you can go with Texina for another countdown gem, make it seven. That is beneficial too. I mean, there's there's different realms that you can go with this. If you don't have Mamrock, Matt Hardy, and Tech Stacy, or even if you have just Matt Hardy and Tech Stacy, I really recommend going into a fight or going in and practicing yourself a little bit. I recommend this with all these cards. Don't just look at what a person is doing with it and automatically go, I've got this. Because what's going to happen is what you're going to do is you're going to load into a feud, you're going to go into a showdown fight, you're going to do something. And it's not going to go exactly the way it went on the video that you watched. And it gets frustrating. It makes you not want to use the card. So always take the time out to essentially kill two birds with one stone. Grind out the nodes. See where you need to be placing the countdowns for yourself and all of this trickery. Do that and grind out your metals and metal parts, your TP, your coin, everything like that. But get comfortable with your card. So now, before we switch over trainers, we're gonna go Irish Curse. This one is ex is extremely tricky. I am tripping over my words right now, but this one, I I'm 50 50 on this one. It is a tough, tough, tough call. So since we are on the tour, I am going to change up what my trainers do strictly from the fact that this can go one of three ways and the two out of those three ways are not very pleasant. So I guess what we could do here is probably we could up it. Yeah, we'll up the submission just because we want to. I'm not going to go five turns with the submission. I'm actually going to go gym damage and finisher damage on the switch this out to green. Yep, right there, loser. Okay, so the main difference between this build and what you would do in feud is unless you can guarantee that the Irish curse is gonna go off with no MP trainers, what I recommend is switching out. I understand people don't have Umaga and I understand people don't have Tatanka. This is the best way I know how to run it for me for you guys, what I recommend is going with the uh, Animal Steel. Get this to go first. 
switch this or switch out Umaga for um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, or you can go with Green Gem damage as well, increasing that up. Oh, no. Yeah, because you have your MP trainer, and you can either go Submission or you can go Finisher. Either way, it's what fits your play style. I recommend using Quick just for the 30% increase on the Finisher, but you can also go Santa Hogan. If you don't have Luger, go Santa Hogan and R-Truth here. I mean, it just kind of balances in my opinion. You kind of want to go a hybrid build with this. So we have all that set. The other difference too is instead of going with like an all move gem, you can go with a yellow, go 200% and make that finisher hit for just a little bit more to kind of ensure a little bit more chaos, I guess. All right, Wade, let's see what you got in store for us today. Okay. So what I highly recommend here is you spread out your jugs a little bit. I mean, always go on loot boxes with the jugs. I'm going to crack that because it takes away. Nope, didn't take it away. Thought it would, but it didn't. Okay, so that's going to increase the MP. Now, here is the kicker. If you set yourself up for the submission to go off first with the juggernauts, What's going to wind up happening is turn two, you are going to hit the ju or hit the submission again because it's already filled and the jugs are going to get covered. So essentially you're taking away half your power by allowing those to get covered. So if there's reinforced gems on the board, do not hit the juggernauts and the finisher at the same time. Bad things happen to good people in this game, and that is one of the bad things that happen. And y'all are good. So, so we'll go there, we'll hit that. Now, one thing I could have considered is doing juggies again, but I want to hold them. Yeah, since there's only a couple of reinforced gems on the board, it avoided the juggernauts. But if a vast majority of the board is covered in reinforce, it doesn't register the juggernauts. And now I think this damage goes through. Yep, damage went through. Okay, so we're looking about half mil damage with that. So one thing we can do here is we can go here. Go tink, tink, tink. Just kind of put them away from everything. There we be, board has exploded, 1.7. So you can tell that this, this setup actually does work. It's effective. The problem with it is it's just too slow. You want, you want speed. And moving forward with Seamus, in my opinion, I plan on taking him to six star silver when I'm able to. That's going to go off. It's going to hurt him. The mom's on top. There we go. We'll just hit here just for craps and giggles. Slam down the jugs again. But I'm 95% positive he's not going to kick out. Yeah, he's not. We're already too low. But sure, I'm gonna plan, I plan on taking him to 6-star silver and maining him as a 6-star silver. I want to fill in his stars, obviously, and go from there. But at six star silver, what I plan on doing is I plan on taking myself away from Fury. I like Fury. I think it's great. But the multiply gems, it's increasing the power and it's doing whatever it needs to do. But at six star silver, he gets a bump up in health pretty well. So if I can put him full vitality with a focus on uh, move dam or all move damage and uh gem percentile then i'm increasing his health by 40 percent, which is huge and basically making it to where he's a little bit harder to kill and they're or not kill drop sorry knock out i gotta avoid certain words that's my bad uh by taking him up there and having him at say 47 50 million health somewhere around there i'm going to ensure that the ai doesn't mess up at a certain point it's going to mess up on the first rotation. It usually does. The reason I say it messes up is it doesn't normally make the wild card, but there are certain occasions where it does make the wild card or it makes the wild card and it uses white noise 
instead of waiting for the countdowns to pop. I've seen it happen to where it does wait. I've seen it happen where it doesn't wait. So this is a, a double-edged sword. While you are running it, it is going to hit like a Mack truck. You are going to have one of the easiest fights that you've ever had. And you're going to just win faster. The counterpart to that, most likely people are going to beat him. It's just whether or not you can stall them out long enough. Now, if Seamus is a requirement and everything, then you already have a showboat, say, um, say by off chance you just got the new Piper plate. And Apollo is going to hit a hundred times harder than Seamus is going to because of that plate. Or you have Hall of Fame Triple H and you put the Piper plate on her. Those two are about equal ground. So what you can do is have them be your hitters, have Showboat Seamus be your defense. I mean, there's multiple ways to play it. But again, I recommend this one just because of how versatile it is, how quick it is. You can't go wrong with Seamus is what I'm telling you. Okay. So with all of that being said, this video went smoother than the last one. I want to once again, thank every single person who has subscribed to the channel, who has sent me kind words about how my videos have gone and everything else. I'm getting a little bit mushy, so I'm going to cut it off there. But thank you again. And as always, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about this. Let's get this channel to be as big as we can get it and to spread as much positivity as we can. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one.